If you've been watching the channel lately, you know that our podcast sponsor, Johnson Plastics Plus, sent over a big free box of goodies for us to check out. We recently unboxed it, and I promised that I would go in depth on each material and how they performed on the array of lasers in our shop. This is the second episode of that testing. Today, we're getting into the Johnson Plastics Plus slate offering, and we'll be putting it through its paces and sharing all the relevant information you need to succeed with this material. You may be thinking that slate is the most inert and boring of laser materials, and well, on the surface, that's true. I recommend sticking around though. There's more to this material than meets the eye. We're getting ready to reveal the complete picture on slate marking, so don't go anywhere, because we're getting started right now. In this guide, we test a range of laser machines to see how they handle slate engraving, looking at both the quality of engravings and how they perform under different conditions like submersion and water. Let's dive into the results. The Ranger 3 70 watt CO2 laser provided a solid, well-rounded result in our testing. The mark it produced is a muted off-white tan with a relatively high resolution that crisply defines fine details and edges. However, Due to the larger spot size of the CO2 laser, thin lines and small fonts do struggle to maintain their clarity, especially at smaller sizes. Despite these minor drawbacks, the overall image quality is impressive. In our water submersion tests, the Mark held up remarkably well, maintaining its visibility both when wet and after being removed from the water with no noticeable change in appearance. This consistency makes the Ranger 3 a reliable choice for projects where durability and resolution are key. The X-Tool F1 offered an interesting contrast in its dual module testing. When using the 1064 nanometer IR module, the mark produced was a medium to light gray, boasting a sharp and precise image with excellent contrast. Fine details were rendered well, and the overall result felt clean and crisp. The 455 nanometer blue diode produced a slightly more muted tan or light brown mark which, although still high quality, didn't achieve the same level of sharpness or contrast. Where the 455 nanometer module excelled though was in water testing. While both marks remained visible underwater, the IR module's mark nearly disappeared once wet, making it less effective for applications where the mark will be exposed to moisture. On the other hand, the 455 nanometer mark maintained its visibility even when wet, offering a significant advantage in such conditions. The X-Tool D1 Pro performed similarly to the 455 module on the F1, but with some improvements in detail resolution. The D1 Pro's engraving was vibrant and sharp, and the finer details were even more precise, making it stand out as a solid performer. Edges were well-defined, and there was no issue with clarity or precision, even on small or intricate designs. Just like the F1 mark, the D1 Pro's mark remained consistently visible in both wet and dry conditions, performing admirably in water testing. For users who need sharpness and clarity, the D1 Pro is a strong contender. Unfortunately, the 30 watt coherent Mactron CO2 Galvo did not impress in this comparison. While the engravings were passable, the marks appeared muddy, lacking in the sharpness and contrast that we found in other machines. The finer details were often lost and thin lines had a tendency to disappear, especially when viewed at certain angles. In addition, the engraved areas exhibited a noticeable heat affected zone which became visible in the right lighting. The color of the engraving varied inconsistently from off-white, tan, to gray, which made the overall mark look less refined. If you thought the CO2 Galvo would look any better in wet conditions, I hate to disappoint you, but that isn't the case here. The 80 watt JPT M7 Mactron fiber laser produced arguably the best results in our testing. The mark was a high contrast, even toned gray that beautifully captured even the smallest details with exceptional clarity. The engraving was sharp and precise with virtually no visible noise or artifacts. The fiber laser's high resolution and precision made it an 
excellent choice for intricate designs, delivering professional grade results. Unfortunately, the mark didn't perform as well in water testing. The engraving was moderately visible when submerged, but once wet, the mark became nearly impossible to see. Despite this, the quality of the engraving itself is undeniably top-notch, making this machine a standout for dry conditions. The 5-watt Ingu Mactron UV laser impressed us with its overall engraving quality. While the contrast wasn't quite as high as the fiber laser, the smoothness and the precision of the mark were outstanding. The details were rendered flawlessly, with edges so crisp they appeared almost polished. The UV laser's marking pattern was also smooth and consistent, creating a refined appearance that was nearly indistinguishable from the material itself. However, like the fiber laser, the UV engraving did not hold up as well in water testing. The mark was visible underwater, but almost vanished once wet, making it less ideal for applications where the engraved slate will come into contact with water. Nonetheless, the overall engraving quality, especially in dry conditions, is one of the best we've seen. When it comes to slate engraving with lasers, each machine has its own strengths and weaknesses. The Ranger 3 70 watt CO2 offers a balanced performance, making it a solid choice for general use. The X Tool F1 stands out for water resistance, while the D1 Pro excels in detail resolution. The coherent Mactron CO2 Galvo, though functional, struggles with clarity and color consistency, but the 80 watt JPT M7 fiber offers incredible resolution and precision, though it does lose some points on its water performance. Finally, the Ingu Mactron. UV produces stunningly smooth marks with excellent detail, but also falters in wet conditions. Each of these machines offers unique capabilities, so the best choice depends on your specific needs, whether that's high contrast, fine details, or durability in moisture-rich environments. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Laser Everything. I hope you got some value out of it. And if you did, don't forget to smash the like button. Let everybody else know the content is good. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get notified the next time we upload an episode. If you really, really love the channel and you want us to keep making stuff like this, please consider subscribing to the Laser Master Academy. It's the number one way to support the channel and it allows us to continue doing the work that we love. You can find links to all of this and more, including the Johnson Plastics Plus Slate, down in the description. I think that's all we've got for this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.